Uh, now I'd like to ask you to cancel this instance since we need two free resources for the next exercise. Uh, and chip still requires some quite a bit uh, resources then we, if we need to have this free. Okay. Um, this free exercise has, has been a way to demonstrate to you how uh, you can combine the different uh, commands provided by, by the Jeffrey Cloud to deploy a complex application with a simple script. And then we used the work done by him in the, in the last month. We uh, demonstrated how to deploy this chip instance with the Federal Cloud. Now, in the second part of this session, uh, we'll show you how to use the basic command of the Federal Cloud to manage virtual machines, then to create the latest virtual machine, configure them, and also to attach a person storage. Uh, this will be the focus of the exercise 2 and 3. Uh, in this exercise, you will deploy a Jupyter Notebook. You know what is a Jupyter Notebook, it's not needed to introduce it. And uh, um, with the exercise 2, you will start a Jupyter Notebook on an EGI Cloud Sites. And uh, with the exercise uh, two, uh, 3, you will add a person storage to this virtual machine uh, to store some Jupyter files. Okay, then let's start with the exercise 2. Um, I would like to ask you to follow the slide you have downloaded from the GitHub. Anyway, I'll give you a short introduction. Uh, what do you have to do? You, you, uh, the first step is to go to the HubDB and find the three identifiers you need. The ID of the cloud site you want to use, the ID of the Jupyter Notebook virtual machine image for that site, and the idea of the resource template the VM should use. For this training, please use the smallest uh, resource template available since uh, the training infrastructure has some limited resources. No? So we would like to be able to give the opportunity to everybody to create the virtual machine instance. Then after you get this three ID, you can create the virtual machine instance with the OSSA call. And finally, you can access the Jupyter Notebook, not the wiki, there's an error on the slide, uh, for, from a web browser. Okay, then the first step is to go to the HubDB with your browser and select Cloud Marketplace on the top, Virtual Organization and Training.ej.eu. After then, you have to choose the Jupyter Notebook Virtual Appliance and uh, specify site. I'll show you this in the, uh, in the next slide. When you will go on the, within, within the training.ej.eu view, you can see a list of different virtual appliances, software appliances available in this view. These are mainly or baseline OS appliance and image with only the OS installed plus specific configuration to properly run in cloud environment. This, this image are very useful as starting environment where you want to create a new image, for example, or if you want to develop, deploy something new in the cloud. Then you have specific appliance. For example, that's the appliance, the virtual machine image containing the Fed Cloud tools. Then you can start this image uh, already having all the tools available. Uh, and other specific uh, appliance, like uh, another example, the Morning Morning Wiki, and the Jupyter Notebook that we are going to use. Then we have the software appliance. The software appliance, uh, each software appliance is made of a virtual appliance and a virtual machine image, plus some software to configure this virtual appliance. This software is in the form of a contextualization script, script to configure the virtual appliance, the virtual machine during the booting time. Okay, if, if, you, uh, if you went to the Cloud Marketplace and if you say go to the virtual organization, you get a list similar to the one shown in the slide. And you have to select the training.ej.eu virtual organization. Then after you select the training.ej.eu virtual organization, you will get uh, this view where you can uh, see all the items related to the virtual organization. And from this item, you have to select uh, virtual appliance. 
to see all the virtual clients available in the marketplace within this virtual organization. Then, from the list of virtual clients, you have to select the Jupyter Notebook, and you will be redirected to this page describing this virtual appliance. Then there's uh, the category, disciplines, the advisor supported, the uh, shop description. When you are here, you have to go in the availability in the usage tag and select in the field endorsed by VO the training.gi.uvo, the VO we are using today during this training. After you select this, you will get the list of the sites supporting this virtual machine image for this VO. Then we have Bifi, Yenofen Catania, Chestnut, and so on. Today we will use, then you have to select all the Bifi one, or the Yenofen Catania stack, or the Chestnut MetaCloud one. I would suggest you to go mainly to this site or to the Spanish one, the Bifi, since are the site where there are more resources. The INFN site is a small site. Okay? After you select one site, you have to you get this list. This is how the flavor available. Then you can create a machine with a small machine with a few memory and only one core. But you can create also a big machine with around 48 gigabytes of RAM and 12 cores. In this case, you have to select uh, the small one. I would say you can also select the one, uh, uh, this one. Uh, so, and you can get ready to selecting this link. When you select the link on get ID, the, uh, you, this uh, windows will be opened, and you can find here the endpoint of the site you need to use the template ID specifying the flavor you are going to use to create a virtual machine and the OCC ID. This is the identifier of the virtual machine image within the site endpoint. These three IDs are needed on the command to create the virtual machine. This is specific which cloud site, this specific the sites, and this the image. Okay, it's clear. Did you get these uh, parameters? Please do it and tell me if there's any problem to get them. Okay. After you uh, reach this page, please leave this page open since you have to copy and paste this this ideas from the browser to your shell. Okay? Okay, this is how the three sites we are going to use. I will suggest you to select this template ID for each site. This one for Chestnut, this one for Beefy, and so on. Okay? After you get this parameter, you have to go to your uh, SSH, uh, to your account uh, through SSH in the user interface we provide you, and you have to run this command. You can also copy and pass the command from uh, the slide. Then you have to define an endpoint variable, and you have to put here the site endpoint information you get from the AppDB. Then the cloud site you get on the FDB, copy and paste. The resource TP, TPL, copy of the template ID from the FDB. The OS TPL, copy of the OCC ID from the FDB. After you define a distribute variable, you can run this command to create the virtual machine. This command allows you to create the virtual machine. Indeed, if you see, here you are specifying in which cloud site you want to create a virtual machine. With the action, you are saying, I would like to create a virtual, uh, 
create something and with the tag of resources you are specifying compute then we, uh, this command is saying we would like to create a virtual machine uh, with these sites, the resource TPL, and starting from this, this virtual machine image. This is the only uh, generic title we are seeing to the virtual machine. And finally, the last, uh, the last parameters is uh, allowing you to configure your public key on the virtual machine virtual machine so when the virtual machine has been started in the cloud you can access it through SSH using your private key this command will return you an identifier of the virtual machine in the cloud and you have to store this identifier in the computer ID environment variable for your convenience okay uh, if you have any trouble to follow the step we suggest to download the slide open them and if you go slide by slide you can easily follow all the steps needed to create this virtual machine now i'm showing you how to start the virtual machine on uh, to the command line anyway we are working to extend the cloud marketplace and the app db to allow the direct deployment of the virtual machine from the browser. This will be available this summer. Then this will simplify a lot the work for not expert people. Sorry, I realized that there's an error in the slide. Uh, you don't have to use the Moin Moin World Wiki virtual appliance, but the Jupyter I cannot change mm, I cannot change okay uh, you have to use not the money money wiki with appliance but the Jupyter notebook with the appliance as I showed you in the previous slide okay this is an error in the slide Okay, after you create your virtual machine, please store the ID you get in the computer D environment variable. So we can use this in the next command. After you create the virtual machine, you can, you can using the slide, you can copy and paste simply, and you can list the virtual machine you created, then you should get one entry, the virtual machine you just created, and describe the virtual machine. This describe command will return a lot of information, it's quite complex, but it's important to get for you for the next step, for you to get information <coughs> about the IP address, the public IP address you need. In the case you are using the beef point, the beef point uh, doesn't assign automatically and, and a public IP address on the virtual machine. Then in this case you have to attach a public IP to the virtual machine. This uh, you have to do this step only for the virtual machine start in the beef point, and this uh, will allow you to attach a public IP to this virtual machine. And you can run again this describe command and get the public IP address. After you create the virtual machine, you should be able to access uh, to SSH to the virtual machine. And once logged in, you can check the size of the image with the command in the slide. 
to verify if this corresponds with the flavor you you chose. And after you have logged in the virtual machine, you can start the Jupyter Notebook with the command Jupyter Notebook. After this step, Jupyter starts a web server, then you can go to the web browser and type HTTPS, the public key of your machine, column 8888, and you should be able to reach the Jupyter Notebook you have just created. Okay, and I'll start to explain the next exercise. In the meantime, you can complete the, this one, if you still need time. <coughs> For this, you would like to also describe the specific st step to run, uh, or we can skip now. Okay. So while we were preparing these um, exercises, I was absolutely certain of how familiar going, you are going to be with Jupiter. Apparently everyone is really familiar with Jupiter, so the next couple of slides are a bit redundant. But the only thing that could make sense is that I've uh, provided here some of the uh, training exercises I've used back home for the purposes of uh, my training. And specifically. Is um, an old book of, on how to create in expression um, uh, heat maps. It's from a public data set, so it's quite easy to use for training exercises. So essentially, um, these files are now on a web service in INFN somewhere. I'm not really sure where. So you can download those files directly into your newly created uh, Jupyter virtual machine. Uh, these are the URLs, so you can just copy them from the uh, from the presentation. So this is the Jupyter environment. I will skip through that really fast. Uh, the uh, the notebooks are for R, so you, if you want to run them or check them out, you should select the R kernel. Um, one of the interesting parts from my side, again, I'm pretty sure you're aware of that, is that I can also use Jupyter inside the classroom for both R training and <laughs> general exercises as well as to be a bit familiar with the command line interface because Jupyter also provides a terminal interface to that. So you can, um, I'm using it in, in, inside the classroom to uh, show people that are not really trained in IT how to use basic commands like pipes and all that. Um, again, most of the ideas from here I got from the, the data carpentry and the software carpentry foundation. So this is uh, the actual um, uh, notebook. Uh, you can d definitely see that. And these are some um, of the uh, exercises that I run inside the classroom. I can definitely skip those as well. Um, in the end, uh, the notebook, if you download, should look like something like that. You can definitely run it and you can use it. The downside, and this is, I think, where the game is going to continue, that is that as soon as you close up the virtual machine, all these files are going to be um, lost because you have to restart the whole files. So if you have um, resistance storage, you can sort of store them there. And at the legal point, you start even about the one bit and then have the exercises up and ready for the next session. So, okay. Yeah, thank you very much for this. Uh, I would like to, for this slide, please download these three files since it will be used for the exercise to show you how the how you can manage persistent storage in uh, the federal cloud. So please download them in your virtual machine you have just created since these are used as input for the next exercise. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, the slides are available in the internet so you can get them. Okay, tell me when I can uh, change the slide. Let's move to the exercise three. In this exercise, I'll show you how to use Jupyter with the person storage. Then I will show you how to manage person storage in the federal cloud. As the thought is said before, when a virtual machine is deleted, 
all its disk are also deleted. Then if you need persistence for your data, you must use a storage volume and attach this storage volume to the UV machine. In, the, in this exercise, uh, you will create a, storage, a persistent storage volume, attach this volume to your Jupyter virtual machine, create a file system in the volume and copy there some Jupyter file. Then you have to detach the volume and delete the virtual machine. Then you have to create a new virtual machine, as you already did with the exercise 2, and attach the volume you created before, and mount the volume, and check the Jupyter files are still there. This is a simple exercise to show you how to, ma to make persistent data within the Federal Cloud. Then you will create a storage, you will copy some data there, you attach this storage, you uh, you, you will detach the storage from the virtual machine and delete the virtual machine, but you will not delete the storage. Create a new virtual machine and attach the storage to this new virtual machine, and you will get access to the data you put there before. This is the command to create the volume. It's like the like the command to create a virtual machine, but instead you have to use storage in the resource tag and you have to specify the size with this format. In this case, we are creating a, a block storage of one gigabyte. After you create the storage, you can save the ID of the storage you have just created in this environment variable. And you can describe it as you already uh, did with the computing, um, uh, with the virtual machine, using the storage engine. Then you can attach the uh, storage to the virtual machine with the actual link, specifying the virtual machine where you would like to attach the storage. And the idea of the storage to be linked. After this command, you have this, the person storage attached to your virtual machine. Then you can run a describe command on the virtual machine image, and between all the information the OCC client will return you, we also get just a section links, and in this section you will find information about the storage we have just created with the ID, the link ID, and very important, the device ID. It means within the virtual uh, machine, the store, the person storage is point, pointed by this path. This is needed to manage the volume within the virtual machine. The link, you have to copy the link ID in this computing, uh, in this environment variable, since we need to use it in the later in other commands. Then, after you, uh, you link the, your storage to the virtual machine, you have to SSH to the virtual machine again, and after then you have to format the uh, storage you have created, and mount the storage in the slash empty folder or any other folder you want. Then you can copy the file I have asked to download from the web server in this folder pointing to the present storage and you can uh, list them to be sure you have copied them. After that, you have to unmount the volume, then you have detach the volume from the virtual machine, deleting the link, and action delete and the resource is the link, and after that you can delete the virtual machine, action delete and the resource compute ID. In this moment you have destroyed the virtual machine you created before, but you, uh, uh, you have not destroyed the storage. Then you can create, again, uh, the virtual machine 
And in the command you used before, you can specify this optional, this, op this uh, additional option, minus minus link, yeah. specifying the ID of the storage. In this way, the OCC client will create the new virtual machine and automatically will link the first storage you created before to the new created virtual machine. <coughs> After you complete this uh, step, you will get a new computer ID and please save it in the computer ID2 environment variable. Now you can log in into the virtual machine uh, uh, with this SSH command, mount the, uh, the storage in the slash MT folder and list the content of the folder and you should get the YouTube the notebook files uh, you have uh, copied in the first virtual machine. <coughs> you, have, you should be able to see them also in the new virtual machine since you copied it in a person storage. After this, uh, you have to delete uh, the instance you created, and then the new virtual machine, and also the storage. When you delete the storage, in this case, the storage has been cancelled. You, obviously, you, uh, the data will not be uh, recovered. OK. No, not everybody completed the exercise, but we need to go ahead with the last part. Uh, anyway, you will have the access to this account also in the next day, so if you like to try it again, you can do it, and uh, I am available to help you, also by mail, if you would like to contact me to have more information. Uh, I would like to go directly in the to the last exercise related to Docker. <coughs> okay, I can skip this introduction to Docker uh, for your reference, okay. This is the last exercise about running a uh, Docker container with Galaxy in uh, the Federal Cloud. In this exercise, <laughs> you have to browsing the eject the BS you did before and find the identifier required to instantiate the machine EGI Docker Ubuntu 14 on a cloud site. Then you have to do the same step you, you have done before, then log in to the ID, check the proxy, uh, create the key, you can skip it, you can use the same key, create the virtual machine instance, and if needed, attach a public IP on the machine. Then, after you uh, log in, uh, you create the virtual machine, you have to SSH into your virtual machine instance. This virtual machine image has a, a Docker pre installed there, then, when you access a virtual machine, you can run Docker, the Docker commands and start a Galaxy server on the machine. After you complete your test, you can delete your virtual machine. Then, as done before, go to the AppDB, Cloud Marketplace, Virtual Organization, Training.EJ.EU, EGI Docker Ubuntu, select this machine, Select the training dot to you. Select one side, possible chestnut metacloud would suggest. Select the one flavor and get the ID as you did before. The cloud site, the template, the image. This is the same step. Then you can create the virtual machine with the user command. It's the same command you, you used before. <coughs> Then set the endpoint versus TPL and OS TPL variable variable. And run the OCC command. Stop <coughs> the computing ID variable. You can run again the describe command to get the IP address. 
and uh, adding the public IP if we are using the beef endpoint and login into the appliance. In this case, you have to login as Ubuntu user. After you login in the appliance, you can run a test command to verify the document installation in the image is valid. And after this, you can start the Galaxy server. Run uh, this command will <coughs> deploy will download the Galaxy container from the Docker from Docker repository and start it. And after you start this, you can access it through your web browser to the port 880. Since uh, uh, the few time remaining. Uh, I would like to, um, uh, <coughs> to invite you to check uh, when you have the time the section related to prepare your own virtual machine image. It explains you how you can prepare a virtual machine image able to run on the all the site of the federal cloud in an easy way. Uh, in particular, uh, we have uh, um, some basic image already available in the catalog. Uh, this image contains uh, all the software. Uh, needed to run on the cloud and also are properly configured from a security point of view to be executed in the cloud. These are marked as EGI in their title, in the catalog. And then if we would like to produce a new image, we suggest pe people to start from this basic image and deploy their software on top of this image. Anyway, you can find more information in the slide. And what I'd like to uh, tell you uh, there's also information in the site about how to become uh, an active user of the Federal Cloud. And finally, uh, what I'd like to uh, say to you is that this training infrastructure we use it today, and then it will be improved also in the next months, allowing the direct submission of the virtual machine from the browser, is available for organized training event. Then if you, if you are interested, you, you can book this for free when you want, you can get more information on the wiki page of the training infrastructure, of the JDN infrastructure. To book it, it's enough to send an email to the support uh, team of EGI, specifying the training course details, the date, number of students, kind of audience, special needs. We can also provide you support on preparing the material to organize a training event. So if you are interested, we are very welcome to offer you this uh, infrastructure.